Welcome to the first edition of Pairing with Bunny, a podcast in which I teach Rachel how to code. Yay! <laughs> Starting from a baseline of knowing basically nothing about coding. Yeah, Rachel, you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Um, so I'm Rachel. Um, I'm 24. I work in a call center. I don't want to work in the call center forever. I love cats and Star Trek. And I have a Lord of the Rings tattoo. And, and I'm kind of a stoner. I guess that... <laughs> Perfect. Oh, and I have a psychology degree, but I don't use it. So that's me. I'm Jessica, uh, better known as Jessitron. <laughs> And I've been programming for about 15 years professionally. Oh, and we're sisters. Yeah. Do you already say that? Yeah. And I always call her Bunny because I've called her Bunny since she was a baby. I'm going to teach Rachel how to program. And so far she's worked on, um, which, which is the book you've been reading? Uh, Ruby. It's a Ruby programming book by Chris Pine. And I can remember that because Chris Pine is the name of the actor who plays young Captain Kirk. So that's easy to remember. <laughs> the Ruby, on the other hand. All right, so part of the problem with programming is it's easy enough to get the basics and be able to write a toy program. You can learn that from any book. But these days, programming isn't just about writing code in language. It's about everything that's around the language, the tools, the concepts. And I mean, even if you like take computer science in school, you learn algorithms and you learn some computing concepts, but you don't learn all the tools that everybody uses every day in a professional programming environment. In, in Pairing with Bunny, uh, my goals are threefold, and learning to code is only part of it. We're really going to try to learn how to do a whole project, and I'm hoping to incorporate in each pairing session, one, make some progress on an actual project, two, learn some concepts, like a particular concept to more depth than is required for the project. Because every time I do that at work, every time I spend more time than I need to really learning something that I'm using, oh my gosh, it pays back a thousandfold, usually within a week. And three, to build up our environment um, and make our own job easier. Uh, Dan North would call this Kaizen. It's getting better at your own job, spending time working at getting better at working. So I have an idea for a project. Um, tell me what you think of this bunny. Okay. All right. So my partner Mario and I uh, run a user group. Well, he runs it, but he's dragged me in because he's tired of doing it by himself. So let's see if we can make a better website because the website has been up there for like 10 years and it's horrendous. So go to lambdalounge.org. Okay. All right, so this is the existing website, and I think we should make a new one. Okay. The, my long-term goal, and this is gonna take us months, is to replace this website. And the short-term goal, no, the, the medium-term goal, is to develop the content of the new website by scraping this one and making a program that puts it into a better format that we can do something with. So scraping a website means uh, downloading the source of it and um, parsing it to get the information out of it. Do you know how to view the source of a web page? Nope. Okay. Well, first, let's find an objective. Uh, before, So it turns out that half of programming, the hardest part of programming is actually figuring out what we want to accomplish. And people think that, oh, no, the business tells us that with their requirements. Psh, ha! What's a piece of information on here that we'll want to keep? The mass amount of information is probably in the old meetings. Is, it, is that all like on this page? If you scroll all the way to the bottom, is it like every meeting everywhere? Yeah, and then it just loads as you scroll. Oh no, dynamic loading. That's the worst for web scraping. This is gonna be hard. Okay, that's, that's bad news for us, Bunny, but um, yeah, welcome to programming. Okay, but let's start by getting like the, the recent ones. The easy ones are the ones that come up at the, um, the beginning. Okay. 
Okay, view source of a web page. You're in Chrome, that's good because Chrome is the best for developing in. Uh, right, so go, we, we wanna find the developer tools, I think. See what's in view. Developer. Developer tools. Okay, yeah, you can start with just view source. It'll give you what you want to. There it is. So this is an HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, which is not a programming language. It's just a markup language, which means it's like formatting. It's text with, with formatting and like metadata. Do you know what metadata is? Data about data? Yes! We're going to eventually need to issue HTTP requests and get uh, the responses back, just kind of like the browser does. Mm -hmm. But for now, you can just like select everything, Control A, Control C, uh, select everything and copy. Does that work? Or Command A. Command yeah, it's C. Command A and C because we're on a Mac, right? Yeah. Okay. I think a computer programmer would know that. Okay, let's see. While we're in here, we wanted we wanted the text uh, of the most recent event. Let's see if we can find that in here. Um, click over to the the real web page, like the the formatted thing. Yeah, that. Okay, so it's the threading models plus Ruby idioms. Okay, good. Yeah, see if you can find that. Okay, can I command find it? Yes, command F. Here we go. It's right here. Okay, good. Uh, right, so you copied it. Let's paste it into a file. Okay, so do you want me to just copy this event or no, the whole paste thing. everything into a file? Because we're going to wind up parsing the whole file. Okay, to where should I paste the file? Like what program? Pick your favorite text editor. Uh, I was just having this conversation with Tyler. I don't know if I have a word editor on here. I no, no, that, right? no, not a word editor. No, oh. no. Like, are you using Sublime Text for Ruby? TextMate, TextMate, TextMate. Excellent. Yeah, so editors like Word are your enemy. Oh, oh yeah, I don't know why. Okay, and then just paste it in here? Yes, you want plain text editor, something that doesn't screw with um, your what you type. The, the worst is when they, like, turn double quotes into, like, the matching double quotes. Because programming languages do not understand the, the okay. curved double quotes, the begin open and close double quotes, that is just like the biggest pain in the butt. So you wanted an editor that won't screw with you. TextMate is a good one. Was that recommended in the Ruby book? Sure was, yeah, and I like that its little icon is this nice pink daisy. I appreciate that. Awesome. All right, save this um, in whatever directory you're doing, your, we're gonna do programs in. Okay, let me, let me create a new folder okay. uh, for just the stuff that we're doing. Ah. What? Ah, stop. Just let me name it. There we go. Okay, can we do this at the command line? So, um, one thing that, so I'm kind of old school with this, but one thing that experienced developers do is if you're using the mouse, you're probably doing it wrong. I mean, not that I never use a mouse. I use it all the time to like switch between windows and stuff. But anything that's like core to my job, I try to be able to do without the mouse and creating a directory is totally there. Okay. But we can worry about that later. I know you know how to do like CD and um, stuff like that from the command line. Yeah, but only like the most basic stuff. Okay. Another thing is I don't, um, I don't name folders or files with spaces in them. Oh. That's just That's because true. it makes command line operations harder. Yeah, you can I'll use dashes or underscores. And in fact, or camel case. Ooh, ooh, okay, quick programming lesson. There's three uh, ways to express multiple words without spaces. If, oh, I don't have control of your screen. If you capitalize the W right now, you have camel case. This is called camel case. Is it like camel toe? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's exactly like camel toe. The whole point is the lumps, right? It's, lumps. <laughs> it's all about the lumps, yeah. Um, 
if instead you left it all lowercase but put dashes between the words, you'd have snake, no, kebab case, kebab case. If you use underscores between the words, that's snake case. Okay. That's fine. So good. We have program with bunny. That's a cromulent folder name. Um, right, and you saved your little file inside mm -hmm. Program with Bunny. Ah, but see, your text editor says it's open on the desktop. Um, so what you did was you opened your file in the editor, saved it to the desktop, moved it into a folder, but your editor still has your file open on the desktop. So uh, let's try something. Make some changes in that document. Okay. Oh, oh get it back, get it back. Okay. Yeah, make some changes in there. Like what changes? Blah, 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 blah. Just Bam. type something in there? Yeah. Uh. Okay. Now save it. You'll notice that it says Command S there, so you can do that. And oh, look. Okay. It's totally confused because actually it thinks it's in program space with space bunny. And it's oh. totally confused. So just cancel, exit, and we want to open it. Yeah, don't say in the new place. Um, so that's that's a, just a caveat of editors. You can have a file open, and then if behind the scenes you move the file, you're totally going to confuse it. Okay. It's funny. That's one of those things that I'm like, there's something wrong. We have a file open, and we just moved it. And why would you ever think about that? You wouldn't unless you've been screwed over by it a hundred times in your lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now if you open that, what does it open in? It opened it in text edit. Ah. Bummer, just X. Okay, right click on it and maybe it'll. Oh, yeah, there we go. This is where the command line is also better because it's, it's more explicit. Well, we can add that in later. All right, we have an HTML file and we want to pull some information out of it. Um. And we can write a Ruby program to do this. Okay. So I want to see what you think. How do you think we could identify the information that we want? And and we're looking for that first post, right? The first post about like meetings or whatever. To start with, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can you command find on here? Probably. Oh, there's three idioms. You probably want the top one. I'm sure it's the first one. Yep. Yeah, it's the first one. So here it is. Ah. Okay, so here it is. I think it starts here. Okay. Yes. Posted November 2nd. Um, good. Now, how are we going to tell... Well, I mean, we could just cut and paste it out of here, but we're not going to cut and paste. That's that's the rule. Um, okay, okay, we totally cut and pasted the file into the text document, and that is explicitly cheating. In at some point in the future, we will retrieve it ourselves over HTTP. Okay. Um, right, but for now, we're skipping that step because I want to get to the toy program. We want I want to write a program to pull this. In interesting information out of this document. Okay. So how do you think you could tell a program how to find this information? You totally did command F on a word that we knew. How would you tell a program to, to find what you just found? Um, I don't know, do you write a program for it to search for like a specific phrase or a specific word? We can, we can. Um, can now, you have it pull from like line to line? Like say we want to pull line uh, 204 through whatever? Uh, yes, you could. Um, That's all though, those are the only ideas I have. Okay, that's, that's all right, let's, let's run with that. And in fact, um, we don't even have to write a program to do that, someone has done that for us. So let's learn a Unix utility. Open a command line. On my terminal? Yeah, terminal. Good morning, Bunny. Ha, I did that. 
<laughs> I know. I saw it. I, I, I like that. Go to go to your directory that you just created. Okay, and list the files in there, and we'll make sure it's there. Okay, how do I list the files again? LS. And then just enter? Yes, for list something. All right, there it is. Okay, good. So now we have our context. We're in the program with Bunny directory, and we have a webpage.txt file. And we wanted line 204 through something? Yeah, let's see, 204 through... Think would it be through two fifteen? Would it be through this line, or is that the beginning? That's a of place this? to start. Okay, so two hundred four through two fifteen. Try tail minus two fifteen. Oh, there's a space. Okay, oh. so command line formatting. You've got the command, which is mm -hmm. tail, and then space, and then some options that start with dash, which is what I'm trying to say with minus two fifteen. What I want to tell tail is get the first. Give me the first 215 lines of this file. And then, oops, okay, you just hit enter. Oops. Okay, you, you didn't give it a file name. If you'd given it a file name, it would read from the file. But oh, since right. you didn't give it a file name, and this is actually, this, this is actually important. Um, that, that's, oh yeah, ke yeah, keep trying, keep trying. But what's actually happening here is mm -hmm. since you didn't give it a file, it's like, oh, you're, you're just gonna, you're just gonna type this stuff. It's now reading, <laughs> exactly, it's now reading from standard in and will continue to read from standard in. So you can type and type and type. And what you're doing is populating standard in right now. And the secret to getting out of this is to push control D. Control D. For done. Okay. Or damn you terminal, stop this. Okay, at that point, um, Tail actually responded and printed out the last 215 lines of, of what you typed. Okay, yeah, now try it again. Try it again. Now that you have a command line prompt and we're talking to the shell again. All right, is that it? Yeah. Whoa, look at that. There we go. Win. Okay, so the good part is it totally did what we told Ooh. it to do. And the bad part is I totally screwed that up and we got the we, we got the last 215 lines and we actually wanted the first 215 lines I was close well yeah <laughs> okay so if we want the first 215 lines we use head instead of tail so different program also does one very simple thing which is print the first part of a file so try that uh oh wait I need to whoops this. what uh wait. txt not text oops well that makes sense then up arrow Push the up arrow, and then you can go back and change it. There you go. There we go. Yeah, we got them. Okay. Uh, so we got the first 215 lines. Out of those, we want some of them, right? We just want the last few. Okay, wait, let's see. Let me find, okay, so that's the tail. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Ah. Uh, oh, here we go. to get you a better terminal. Okay, yeah. It is starting here. Um, good. Yes. Yeah, so how out of that we can? So now we've got the first two hundred fifteen lines. We can narrow that down to just the last. What did we want? Eleven of those. Two hundred fifteen minus two hundred four is eleven. Yeah. All right. So how would you get the last eleven lines of something? So the last eleven lines of this chunk. Yeah. Um. Please give me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm out of oh, ideas. Man. Okay. Well, well you know, we just did idea. that. We just got the last 215 lines of a file, right? Right. Because I told you to do tail instead of head. Yeah. So what we actually need is the tail of this head of this file. Okay. Hold on.